rider. So last video we did a uh, part one about how to ride a motorcycle and it was basically about the uh, controls. Um, so part two, we're actually gonna go over the uh, dashboard so we can show you exactly what those controls that we had used in the first video and what the dashboard looks like when we use those controls. All right, so let's get this video started. First thing we want to do is take the key. Turn your bike on. Right now, my bike is in neutral. And as you can see, there are some other things on this dashboard. So this is the dashboard. Uh, for me personally, I like to call it the um, pilot screen because I consider myself a ground pilot when I'm on my bike. But this is what the dashboard uh, looks like. And right now, I just have the key uh, turned on so the bike is not totally turned on yet. So once you put your key in, you turn it on, and you go to your kill switch, and you start your bike. So this right here is your odometer. Your odometer, as you can see, I have 6,699 miles. So that's the total number of miles this particular bike has uh, from when it was first uh, bought. Part of the odometer, you can also say you got your time. You know, it's 527 right now. And then you have your cooling system right here, which determines how hot and cold, you know, your bike is. So you want that level to be in the middle. You see what mine is in the middle. So that means it's doing this thing and it's not overheating. If it goes up all the way up to the end and you start to get sick bars up here, you got a problem with your bike overheating, all right? Neutral, your bike is in neutral, meaning that <laughs> when your bike is in neutral and you see the green light over here, that means it's in neutral. You can rev the throttle all you want. The bike, the bike is not going to move because you're in neutral. But when you're in neutral, you can duck walk your bike, as you can see. I'm duck walking my bike, back and forward, duck walking my bike, back and forth. So the bike can be moved back and forward uh, freely while the bike is in neutral. All right? So one more time. This is your odometer. Your odometer shows you how many miles the bike has. This is your, your clock right here. This is your coolant, your, cool, your coolant system right here where these bars at. This is your gear indicator where the end is at right here. This line right here with these bars represents your RPMs, which stands for revolutions per minute, meaning that when you turn the throttle, that's how much power you're giving, giving, the, giving the bike. The revolution is going up. And remember, you don't want to go all the way to the red line when you're revving, revving the throttle, no matter what gear that you're in. And lastly, this is your um, your speedometer, where the zero is his, and naturally when I start riding, the bike is gonna go in miles per hour, you know, three, four, five, 10, 20, depending on how fast I am, so, all right? So let's go through it again. Odometer, you can consider this odometer, all of this, mainly the odometer is right here where your total miles off of your bike is. You got your gear indicator. Your tachometer is this line right here with these bars, means revolutions per minute when you rev the throttle. And then your speedometer is this big zero right here, so when you start riding, your bike is gonna go up in miles per hour. So you have your odometer, your tachometer, and your speedometer, okay? When your bike is in neutral, that green light is going to show that's the green tip. All right. All right. So we got we got all of that. We got your tack. You got the tachometer. <clears throat> you got your speedometer. You got your odometer. Your odometer, gear indicator, tachometer, speedometer. You guys got all. You guys got all of that. Wonderful. All right. Over here, this is my lights cut my lights on high beams on up or down all right this is my left right switch if I'm going left I'm clicking this to the left 
to go left, as you can see. If I have to go right, I click it to the right, as you can see. To turn it off, you have to push it in, all right? On motorcycles, you have to push this in for most motorcycles in order for this to uh, turn it off. If you don't push it in, you're gonna keep having a left or right indicator blinking the whole, the whole entire time. You don't want that. Right side, like I said, this is the kill switch. And, you know, it's already down all the way. But for the R3, it's two stage, so when it's up all the way, bike is off, battery is off. But as you can see, the bike is totally not off. Once I turn the key, now the bike is off. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to start the bike when the bike is not in neutral. All right, so the bike is off right now. And let's start the bike up. Turn the key. All right, I'm going to do the same thing we did last time. I'm going to click once because my uh, kill switch is two stage. And then I'm going to start it. As you can see, oh, nothing is happening. What's going on? Why is my bike not starting up? You think you have a dead bike. Nope. Here's what the problem is. <clears throat> There's two problems, actually. Don't turn this off. Your bike has basically some fail-safe systems in it, which is going to help you keep you safe, you know, <clears throat> when you first start your bike up so you don't end up doing dumb stuff, smashing all over into everything while your bike is in gear, and you don't realize that. So when your bike is in gear, your bike is not going to move because your bike is in neutral. As you can see, I cannot move my bike forward or backwards. The bike is basic, basically locked. Your kickstand, I'm not sure you keep, if you can see this, but when your kickstand is down, that is a fail safe. Your bike, your bike will, not, will not start up. So now, let's put it, I'm gonna put the bike in neutral. And in order to do that, guess what you have to do? Hold in the clutch, click up half a click, and as you can see, my bike just went to neutral, okay? But I'll release the clutch. Now, my bike can roll back and forward, but the kickstand is still down. So watch what happens when I try to start the bike. I'm gonna start the bike. The bike is started. Kickstand is still down. I'm gonna hold in the clutch and I'm going to go into first gear to get going. What happened? The bike shut off. Why did the bike shut off? Fail safe. The kickstand is down, all right? So now I'm in first gear, so now how do I get the bike moving? Basically, <clears throat> kick the clutch up, make sure, I mean the uh, bike stand, make sure the bike stand is up, all right? You hold in the clutch, put your kill switch all the way back up. You don't have to turn the bike on and off, whatever the case is, some people do it. Once your clutch is in, now you can start your bike. If your bike is in gear, the only way that you'll be able to start your bike is if you hold in the clutch. Holding in the clutch means what? We went over it in the first video. It means that you're not allowing power to go to the rear wheel. So the bike won't go forward. So that is considered a fail safe. Okay? Let's do it again power off, kickstand down, and turn it off. So now, we turned, we turned the bike on, you know, while it was in neutral. Pretty easy. You didn't really have to do anything because the bike was in neutral. All you had to do was turn the bike on and then click the kill switch, turn your bike on, and you're ready to rock and roll. All right? Now, 
I'm going to turn the bike on. Bike is on. We don't hit this yet because this is what's going to start the bike. Kickstand up. Or you can actually do the kickstand. Actually, let's do, let's do this. Let's do this one more time. All right. Let's let's kind of do it the proper way. You on your bike? Ready to go? Kickstand up. Turn your bike on. You know you're in first gear. If you already know you're in first gear, your clutch should already be in. But I'm just showing you that, you know, you're pulling the clutch because you see that you're not in neutral. You're in first gear. Your clutch is in. Now you can start your bike. Make sense? This right here is for my high beam and low beam. My high beam is on. I can tell because of the blue light. I just switch when I switch the button down, it turns the high beam off. When I switch the button up, it keeps the high beam on. I like to keep my high beam on at all times. It makes my light even brighter and it's visible for cars to actually see me. So you can see the indicators, you know, low beam, high beam right here. This button right here, this button is your um your left right indicator so if you turn the left you turn the right make sure you use those so in order to use this if you're going to be turning left <coughs> you click left and as you can see it's going left it's clicking towards towards left all right to turn it off it doesn't go off by itself like a car you have to push it in to turn it off if you want to go right you push right your indicator is now on your right hand side okay that little yellow light on the bottom it just means that my bike has abs but when i start the bike that yellow light is going to turn off by itself all right so up on top this little button right here this is my high beam you know flashing so in order for this to work my high beam has to be off as you can see it's off and then i'll click you can't see it because it's daytime but i'll click and then the high beam will flash you know we'll do some flashing all right so <clears throat> let me turn my high beam back on all right so once again your buttons this is your high beam low beam right here this is your turn indicator click left you click left to go left you, you push it in you push in to turn it off if you're going right, turn it right, you push it right. Right above that, this button is your horn. As you can see, that's my horn right there, okay? That's very important. Always use that. You feel cars are getting a little bit too close to you, all right? That's your horn. On the opposite side of the handlebar, where my throttle is at, the only thing I have is just my kill switch. This is the kill switch, just turns off the battery, you know, of, of, of the bike, to stop it running. And this right here is my emergency light. So if I, you know, click this, you know, left or right, whatever the case is actually, you click it. So when I click it left, you can't see it, but it's, you know, it's behind me. I don't want to get off the bike, but that just tells you that my emergency lights is going, you know, going off. And as you can see on the dashboard, you'll see both lights. So you see the green light on the left and the green light on the right. That means that my emergency lights is off. And that means I'm a complete hazard on the road. Cars should be slowing down until I should be able to get over to the shoulder or sidewalk um, to get my bike, you know, myself out of harm's way. All right. So I'm going to turn that off. Turn that off by clicking that right. All right, so hopefully you got that. Once again, you got your odometer. What is your odometer for? That's to let you know how many miles the bike has all together from when it was first bought, how long you've been riding it. I have 6,699 miles, you know, paired with the clock, you know, and your cooling system and your gear indicator, okay? Your tachometer, once again, 
Because these lines up here are these numbers. Okay, the numbers go from 0 to 13. As you can see, when it gets to 13, that means that it's red lining. So you don't want to red line your bike, like I said, because that means you're using too much power for the engine and that gear, and you're going to and you're going to destroy it. Okay. Here is your here is your gear indicator. Sorry about that. Somebody's pulling up over here. Here is your gear your, your gear indicator right here. Okay. And above that is your tachometer. So once again, your tachometer shows you your revolutions, you know, per minute. Okay. All right, so we got that. I'm gonna turn this off so as you can see it's blinking. We're gonna hit the button, all right? So remember, you got your odometer, you got your tachometer, and you got your speedometer. Okay, your speedometer is here, your big zero right here. This is your speedometer, so you're at zero. In order to increase that in speed, you have to go higher up in speed, okay? So that's your speedometer. So hopefully this video helped you out and Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you guys on the next video of getting our bike started.